Okay, I was asked a question uh, from one of the Course in Miracles lesson to explain um, what I see as a form of vengeance. Now, this, the, you know, you could say that while the ego still exists, uh, the projections and perceptions that arise out of it um, is a form of um, vengeance against God's will. It's like a, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, and not only is it a vengeance or not aligned with God's will, it creates a world of vengeance. Because the ego, uh, the core aspect, you could say, to, to make it simple, the core aspect of the ego is fear and separation. Is the identification with body and thoughts, and then the projection that one is in fear and separation to others. And as soon as this fear and separation starts to exist as a identified reality, then um, uh, to the extent that there's greater identification with the ego, the greater the experiencing of fear and separation, then the world becomes more selfish and the projections of how other people are also becomes more fearful. So you're living now what I see is a form of vengeance. So you're seeing a world where vengeance seems to be real, where you're disconnected, uh, <clears throat> you're not whole, and you're seeing yourself as being separate, needing things, needing people to behave a certain way. And it's kind of like a, a world of vengeance. So it's not a, a world of oneness and love, um, but it's a world of fear, separation. And you could, I mean, you could say it's um, to be in the ego is to experience the vengeance, you know, a world of vengeance or a vengeance of being separated from God, from 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 the oneness. So, can, can I just ask yes? you? But what if what you're looking at doesn't engender that? You know, you're just looking at something beautiful. Like, so I know this will perish, this will not last, but. It doesn't, like something beautiful from nature or a beautiful person doesn't seem to me like a, that's something to do with love and not benefits. Well, you can, you can, um, there's various things. You can flip between levels of consciousness. I mean, if you're witnessing something from a non-dual, uh, from a non-dual place, then everything's witnessed to be equally divine and beautiful. If it's coming from an ego, um, you could say an ego judgment, i.e., I like, this rose is beautiful and that table is ugly, you know, then it's uh, still, you could say it's a subtle form of, um, of duality, a subtle form of uh, separation from being in that state all the time of witnessing everything uh, as being part of divinity. So um, also remember that um, this thing of good and bad and pretty and not pretty and um, uh, useful and not useful it is all arising out of the ego's projections so you know if when it, when you're in divine states you're in like what what you'd call these um, you could call them flow states um, divine witnessing everything unfolds everything is witnessed to be perfectly what it is, and there's no judgment of good or bad or this or that, or um, and everything is actually revealed to be uh, to have um, divinity. I remember when I'm in spiritual states, there, there's a sacredness and 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 a timelessness to the quality of the moment uh, and and the witnessing, and even things that would normally be perceived as being ugly or bad are seen totally differently. So that's why when I was doing the lesson, it just felt weird sometimes to say that this is a form of vengeance. So oh, think oh I see. I feel like that because I was feeling maybe more in a, um, just being with things as they are, maybe closer to that. Yes, a bit like the state I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. I mean... Um, so then it felt like it was out of, like the parish, I could still understand, I could see that, how everything perishes and will not live. And, but I also see everything interconnected, but the vengeance just didn't... Oh, no, I mean, that, well, that's something different. I mean, certain... You can, you can just use in the course whatever resonates with you. You don't have to use vengeance. I think it sometimes does use 
uh, very mildly strong language about what the ego is sometimes in the course. But just, mm. just to try and let, help you to let it go. Not, it's basically, to, uh, my view is it's trying to say, like, don't go to your ego to get satisfaction and specialness mm. and, and this and that. Because for me, the course is about everything within the world, of, we're releasing all the attachments to things of form within the world to experience the eternal, formless, true nature uh, or the oneness that is revealed. And so if you, if you hold on to any sort of attraction to your ego, any kind of attachment to form, uh, then it will preclude you accessing the, you know, uh, the ultimate truth. So I think it's just said in that light, but you don't have to use the word vengeance. You can see everything, even the word everything perishable will do, you see, because the ego usually has an investment. You know, I like flowers, but I don't like dustbins. You know, so it has this dualistic thing, but then you're still, you're still making judgments and having value, value things, valuing things differently or making things special based on the ego projections, yes? So your e it's like the ego is like a computer. It's like trying to filter the world and, and, and then, and then it, you don't actually see the world then, you see a projection of the world and it's like a filtered, it becomes a filtered screen of, of what you're seeing. So if you totally, just using the word perishable, you know, value nothing Value nothing in this world that is perishable, what does that mean? It's just like make everything meaningless. It means make everything your ego has got a view on, let it totally go. You know, we're, we're releasing all things of this is good, this is bad, this is special, this is not special. Then you start to access probably like what you were starting, you're starting to access spiritual states, you know, timeless, joyful spiritual states. And actually, in those states, you know, quite often everything is seen to be beautiful. There's a flow, there's a timelessness, there's a transcendent quality to experiencing. So, does that answer that question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think as well with, with the Course, when you're doing the Course in Miracles, um, like n after many years of doing the Course, I'll sometimes use the line within the lesson that resonates most with me. Um, and I, I can get I can get what everything says, but some of them resonate with me, uh, so I'll, I'll use that. So if it was like vengeance wasn't resonating, but perishable, mm -hmm. every you know everything in this room is is perishable. You know, um, for me it's like you know I was talking earlier about addiction. You know, addiction is like trying to make something important uh, and get some kind of satisfaction out of that. But you're not, if you release everything the ego is trying to control, grab uh, satisfaction. Satisfaction can be positive or negative, to be afraid of. The, the, um, in Buddhism they call them the, attachment, the um, attractions and the aversions. You see, those are the ego positionalities, attractions and aversions. So you want to you wanna, like, neut neutralize all the attractions and the aversions the ego has. I like good weather, I don't like bad weather, roses are better than then dustbins, um, and then you start, and then these spiritual states where the divine beauty uh, unfolds in every moment is witnessed. So yeah, that, that's, is that okay? Yeah? And how to deal with, um, like, mothers or parents or, or difficult figures. It's, um, you know, the attitude, the attitude I had with, with my mother was to have 100% transcendence. You know, because, you know, my teachers, Muji and Hawkins, are enlightened teachers. The Course in Miracles is, for me, a course in enlightenment. Um, so, you know, meaning that they can't trigger you. There's nothing they can do to trigger you. And you can still retain your happiness, no matter what they do. So it just involves... Um, there's, there's various various acts, aspects, but uh, I found uh, when I was using the meaningless, and when I was like saying, you know, it's like the aim was to transcend my mother's vocal tones. You know, sometimes she'd have a tone which would be more stern than other times. Transcending my mother's facial expressions, 
transcending uh, my mother's language. So all of those, the, the aim was to have not, those have zero effect on me and to be able to do the spiritual work until that could not affect me at all. And the relationship wasn't that great when I started doing uh, spiritual work. But as I did the Course in Miracles on her, um, and I had that, because I was following the Enlightened Teachers, I, ha I, had, I was holding that in mind. There's nothing my mother can do, say, or, or, or have any kind of voice, voice tone or facial expression that can affect my peace. Absolutely nothing. I was willing, I wanted that. So I did the Course in Miracles on her, made her meaningless, make her voice. Her, her voice tone is as meaningless as the rain or a tap running. You know, her facial expressions are as meaningless as a pillow or as a lamp, you know. Whatever she says is as meaningless as, you know, what's on EastEnders, you see. So to just take out, to be neutral. So I did that, plus the um, self-inquiry, you know, going to the observer. If I'm, if I'm hooked in, you know, who, what am I? What is it within me? Is it my thoughts? Is it my feelings? Um, is it an image that I'm hooking into? What's observing the image? What's observing the story in my head that's going on? What's witnessing it? Is there a detached witnesser of there? Is there a witnesser where this doesn't exist? So you just take it back until it totally disappears. And so you're washing the hook. Every, every time the hook gets milder and milder, that you're hooked in. And it was, uh, it was, it was what I found was it was miraculous. Oh, the other thing, of course, was feelings. If she said or did something and feelings arose, anger or whatever it was, uh, fear, then I would sometimes, I would spend, anyway, I was spending time regularly every day, just sitting, allowing myself to experience the feeling without labeling. So, no, I don't need to engage in a thought or a story about it or an image about it. Just allow whatever is being experienced to be experienced without labels or thoughts. So usually the thoughts come up, unhook from the thought on the image and just allow the feeling to be experienced. If another thought gets hooked into, just release it. So you just release the emotional, the, the pre-existing emotions that I had built up around the mother. And then I found that when she, there was no triggers or hooks at all, at that, you know, more or less at that point, the relationship transformed, and it's been lovely since. Because, and it was like, but there was a, you know, there was a thing. So it was a miraculous, you know, once you release. And symbolically, all, all of this is outcomes and expectations of what the world should be, how people should behave, what they should say, what they should not say. All these um, programmed ideas of what a mother should be, what a mother should not be, what... All, you delete all of that, cancel all of that, and then, and then there, can be, there can be love without wanting anything or wanting any change or being affected. So, and that was the, you know, since I seek enlightenment, it was to get all of that. So, you know, practicing the observer, you, when, you, when you're getting hooked in, you use the observer, see, find out is it you, what, what is you that is hooked in, what's observing that, or if it's an image or a feeling, what's observing the feeling. And if that is an interested observer, is there an observer which is not interested, which is observing that? And you just release it until you get to these, till you totally release the hook. Or if it's an emotional charge, you can just allow yourself to experience it until it passes. So those are the things with the mother. Also, certain Course in Miracle lessons, uh, you, whichever Course in Miracles lessons you're, you're doing, you can use it. Plus, you can have your favorites, which you can use at any time. You know, if it's, I pray for a miracle to see my mother differently, God is the love in which I forgive my mother. Um, you know, um, you can use whatever, you know, my mother's meaningless. And these are, you know, all to release my ego identifications so that only the, the true remains. Because we're, we're just releasing what the ego is so that we can be the truth of what we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay.